Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bazar. In this video, I'm going to talk about the CZM in Abacus. CZM is the abbreviation of Cohesive Zone Method. Abacus has extensive capability in CZM. In Abacus CAE, CZM has two branches. The first branch is cohesive element and the second branch is cohesive surface. You can use both of these branches with abacus structural solvers. I mean abacus standard and abacus explicit solvers. Cohesive element has more applications than cohesive surface. But you can use both of these methods for simulating the damage propagation in interfaces like delamination in composites. For example, you can simulate the delamination in the low velocity impact of composites or high velocity impact of composites and fiber metal laminates. Or you can simulate the damage propagation in the interface between the reinforcements and concrete in the reinforced Concretes. In this video, I will talk about some of the problems that I have solved them and I have simulated them by using CZM in Abacus CAE. At this moment, uh, I want to demonstrate uh, some of the examples that I have solved them by using cohesive elements and cohesive surface. I open this CAE file. Uh, model 1 and model 2 are about uh, the DCB test and model 3 and model 4 are about the ENF test. In the field of fracture mechanics, we have a lot of tests and uh, DCB and ENF test are famous between these tests. We use DCB test for the measurements about first fracture mode and we use ENF test for the measurements of second mode of fracture. For the simulation of DCB test, in the model one, I have used cohesive elements and in the model 2 I have used cohesive surface and for simulating ENF test in model 3 I have used cohesive elements and in model 4 I have used cohesive surfaces. Now I want to talk about uh, these models. First I want to talk about the cohesive element model in um, DCB test. You can see that we have two parts. The first part that his name is AL is the aluminium beam and the cohesive represents the cohesive layer, the cohesive element layer. 
and in the property module I have defined a material for each of them IL and CO and I want to talk about material CO that I have assigned it to the cohesive part there are several applications for cohesive elements if you want to simulate the damage initiation and damage propagation in interfaces like adhesive joints you must use the traction separation formulation of cohesive elements here you can see that i have defined several behavior first elastic behavior the type is traction if you want to use traction separation formulation you must set the type setting to traction you can use coupe traction too but it has six coefficients instead of three coefficients of traction and uh, we usually use traction instead of coup traction then i have chosen quad s damage mechanical damage for traction separation laws quad s and uh, quad s is one of the damage initiation criteriums for cohesive elements in the abacus CAE four damage initiation criteriums for cohesive elements are available quad e max e quad s max s you cannot use max pe and max ps for cohesive elements and if you want to see the damage propagation and the removal of damage elements you must define damage evolution from the sub option and uh, several criterions are available here you can set type to energy or displacement and uh, you can choose the softening behavior and degradation behavior and uh, mix mode behavior uh, in this window this setting and this setting is very important i mean energy or displacement and mode independent tabular power law or bk BK and power law and mode independent are famous, but using mode independent is very simple. And so this setting is very popular. You can use damage st stabilization coefficient from this part um, for stabilizing the solving process and uh, for having a faster run and with uh, fewer cutbacks and fewer iterations um, after defining the material you must define a section and then assign it to your part or parts I have defined a cohesive section if you want to create a cohesive section you must do this choose other and then choose cohesive you must choose the material you must choose the response you can see there are several response if you want to use cohesive elements for crack propagation analysis and damage analysis in 
adhesive joints and adhesive interfaces, you must use traction separation. If you want to simulate adhesive interfaces with finite thickness that can be measured simply, you must use continuum response. And if you want to simulate gaskets with cohesive elements, you must use gasket response. And uh, I choose this and here you must enter the out of plane thickness. This is my settings and in the assembly module I have assembled the parts and this is the cohesive part and this is the initial crack in the interface. Defining uh, or having initial crack in the model depends on the physical conditions of the problem. In many problems, we do not have any initial delamination or initial crack. So there is no need for defining it. But here in DCB test, we have initial delamination. So I have defined it. And in the step module, I choose an static general step. You can see its settings. And in the simulation of the DCB test, the target is capturing the variation of reaction force versus displacement. I have choose second component of reaction force and second component of displacement and I want to show you the set one. The displacement control loading will be applied from this point. So I have defined a set from this point and I have defined the history output for it. In the interaction module, I have defined tie constraint between the cohesive part and aluminium beams and in the load module I have defined the loads according to the test rig in the lab the displacement control load and other boundary conditions. And you can see the mesh of the model for having an exact solution and the size of the cohesive elements must be little enough and for optimizing the number of elements I have used bias technique here in the direction of thickness And uh, 
I have set the family of cohesive region to cohesive And now I want to talk about the cohesive surface model. If you want to use cohesive surface, there is no need to define the adhesive interface as a part. And uh, you must define a contact property that has cohesive behavior. Here I have one part, AL. And other settings are similar to the first model. But here I have defined this interaction property with these settings that is similar to the settings of the first model but in the first model I have used the cohesive element technique some of uh, their settings are similar And this is the mesh of the model. Now I want to compare the results. I start from the first increment. They are the cohesive elements. You can see that in the 16th increment, some of the cohesive elements are removed from the model. They are damaged completely. And the delamination propagates. I choose the SDG variable you can see that these elements are damaged too because uh, SDG is one in these elements but these elements are not damaged because the value of SDG is zero in these elements now I want to select the results of model 2. If you use cohesive surface, the parameter that demonstrates the level of damage is CSDMG. And you can see the propagation of delamination in this model. Now I want to compare the 
force displacement curves first I want to uh, compare the reaction force curves the red curve is related to the cohesive elements and the blue curve is related to cohesive surface you can see that um, the curves are close to each other And I want to show you the models of ENF simulation. The boundary condition of this model is like this. The pin boundary conditions are applied to these points. And the displacement control load is applied to this point. We have simplified the model because in the ENF test there is no direct boundary condition. There are rollers in these points. In this point and in this point there are fixed rollers and in this point there is a roller that moves in the y direction but we have simplified the model and we have omitted the rollers because if you want to define rollers you must define contact interaction between the beam and the rollers and these contacts will increase the level of nonlinearity in the model and uh, the simulation will take more time so i have omitted the rollers and i have simplified the model i have done this in the cohesive surface model too and this is the mesh of my model now I want to compare the results of model 3 and model 4. And you can see the delamination propagation. This is the reaction force curve of the cohesive element model. 
and this is the curve of cohesive surface model and you can see that they are close to each other you can contact us by using telegram or whatsapp or using email these are our paid services one-on-one -on -one tutoring on skype whatsapp and making a special videos to your order and answering your questions high quality simulations for tests exercises and industrial projects by using abacus all of our services are paid services we can adapt our services according to your conditions and your needs the cost of services depends on the subject of your project and its complexity and it means that our costs are not predefined and it depends on the complexity of the project the cost of service must be paid by PayPal. This is the only way for transferring money for us. Thank you so much for your attention and concentration. Good luck.